It has happened, ladies and gentlemen. The Hot Toys Spider-Man No Way Home Tobey Maguire figure, also known as the GOAT, has officially entered the display, and I can safely say, what the hell happened? I mean, look at bro's forehead. Can't forget about that amazing neck seam. And how about those batch one masks? Trying to do better. It's time to find out what the hell went wrong with the Hot Toys Spider-Man No Way Home line. Let's get into it. What is up everyone? It is Riley Reviews back again with another video here and today is a big one, perhaps a little negative one as you saw from the title of the video. 15 failures Hot Toys made on the Spider-Man No Way Home line. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, despite the movie making more than $1.9 billion, this line did not turn out as promised and we are going to dive into it. But before we do, if you enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future Spidey content coming to the channel. But enough yip yapping, coming from an experienced No Way Home collector, you're about to find out how Hot Toys kind of dropped the ball on an otherwise perfect line of prototypes and the potential for one of the best figure lines ever. Let's get into it. Boy, oh boy, where do I begin? You know what, before I begin, just a disclaimer for people who haven't followed the channel, Tobey Maguire is the GOAT Spider-Man for me, making this easily my most anticipated Hot Toys ever. And being as critical as I am, I was just not a fan of how this mask turned out. And honestly, having it on the shelf now in the collection, it's the only Spider-Man we're going to get. And this is the best licensed Spider-Man we're going to get in a six scale form. So I'm still somewhat satisfied with it, is what you could say. But that does not mean I'm not going to critique it. Because man, if you are a Raimi diehard fan, you know how many problems there are with this particular figure. But some people just aren't that critical, and that's perfectly fine. But for me, I'm going to be that way. The first thing I want to talk about is how ugly the forehead seam is. This is something that honestly most collectors can even gather, even from the release. Now, for collectors who aren't aware, all the masks on the Hot Toys are made of fabric, so they have to be sewn somewhere, and there has to have that stitch. The problem with this Toby is that it is so close to the front of his face, and not only closer to his face, but also more prominent, that it makes it a little more noticeable than the other Spideys. Now this obviously isn't a major issue, but I just feel like if you're paying this much for a figure, you shouldn't be dealing with annoyances like this. But let's move on to the actual major controversy with the mask, which is the infamous batch one screw up. So if you didn't know about this, the first batch of Toby Spideys that released looked absolutely horrible, which are the photos you are now seeing. Thank the Hot Toys gods, I got the batch two mask. But these photos you see here were the first released Tobys and they looked absolutely atrocious. If I was opening my Toby figure and got this specific mask, I would frankly be embarrassed to be collecting Hot Toys. This is a huge deal. And for people saying otherwise, come on. This is Toby freaking Maguire. This is the most iconic Spider-Man out there in my opinion. And I just feel like Hot Toys should have put way more effort into this legendary character. You know, since we're already bashing Toby, we might as well go down to the neck where this little conundrum happened, where the newly introduced neck seams did not turn out so well in comparison to the Andrew Garfield figure, which we will get into. But before I do, you can very clearly see that the neck seam to take off the neck to the head sculpt is very noticeable and very prominent. I feel like most collectors were so excited to finally have a neck to display the Tobey Maguire sculpt with, but if it turned out as noticeable as this, maybe the latter was better preferred because it almost looks like his head fell off and someone tried sewing it back into place and i understand it's a figure it's a toy of to people but hot toys are meant to be the most realistic representations of the character and when we have seam lines like this i just feel like yeah nah man but when you're paying 300 plus i want to have that covered just like this andrew was which we are going to talk about right now as you can clearly see, the Andrew Garfield has the neck seam where you can take it off, but it is almost not noticeable at all. It's a non-issue, so I don't understand 
what happened or what changed with this Tobey Maguire figure. What's even more laughable is that the Tobey released after this Andrew. So it honestly makes no sense to why they wouldn't be able to perfect Andrew Garfield's next scene to Tobey's. And now that we're on the topic of Andrew. Ah shit, y'all thought I was done with Spider-Man? Don't even get me started on this Andrew figure. So let's begin with failure number three, which is the No Way Home licensing. Now, oddly enough, Hot Toys couldn't get the No Way Home license to Andrew Garfield, and a lot of other toy companies had the same issue. I'm still genuinely curious why this is to happen. Maybe the actor himself didn't want to be in it. I don't even know, but they had to cut corners and make a TASM 2 updated figure. I still feel like this could be considered a fail because this killed the opportunity for a better and older Andrew head sculpt and a better mask in general. And you can't lie, a lab coat accessory would have been fire. Here's another one that will absolutely haunt me, but not anymore, which we will get into, but is the eye lenses on the Andrew Garfield figure. As you can see, Hot Toys made them gray, which is just not accurate to the TASM 2 film. And this correlates to what I said about not having the No Way Home license. Maybe they just weren't able to give new eye lenses. I still think that's an excuse though. I think no matter what, they should have had this, which is the white eye lenses custom made by Vincent Toy. I did make a video on this if you want to find the details, but this is a fail for Hot Toys, but not for my own collection because I got it fixed. Keeping this fail short and sweet, you can see it right here. The suit rides up when you move this TASM figure up and bend the arms. It's not like the end of the world and I hate it, but again, you're paying $300 for figures like these. I feel like the tailoring should be top notch and clearly Hot Toys cut some type of corner here because it's looking less than ideal and it's not too great. Now this is a weird fail because I feel like some people don't face this issue. I've talked to collectors out there, but the mask articulation, when I move them to the left, when I move them to the right, is perfectly fine. But every time I try and move this head down or up, it pops off so easily and it's not able to look up fully to like the ceiling to where other hot toy figures can look up. I know my buddy Nick Collectibles has this issue, but my other friends don't have this issue. But like I said, it is really annoying. Maybe I just got unlucky and others out there, but it just can't look up without popping off every second. And it's funny because my Toby figure doesn't have this issue, but then again, he has the neck issue. So you just can't have a perfect head sculpt, can we? Mother f Isn't it so funny how a lot of the fails are coming from the main trio, which made us all walk into this theater in the first place? But here's another one, the reuse of the Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland sculpts. I understand Andrew was a license issue, but you still could have done a better TASM 2 version of the sculpt, rather than just repurposing your original one you had 10 years ago and saying, hey, you know, this'll do. And again, Tom Holland has the same issue. As you can see right here, this is the No Way Home one you get with the integrated, which is pretty similar to the same as the one we got from the Far From Home version, which I can somewhat understand since the Far From Home was a great sculpt to begin with. It's not the same as Andrew, but it still kind of shows that laziness and how we could have gotten something cooler. Maybe even do a battling version of when he fought Goblin with those bloodshot eyes. That would have been sick. Okay, is everybody with me? Almost nine minutes in the video, we are getting to failure number eight. If you made it this far, hit that like button if you're enjoying the video, but let's talk about this neck problem. Unfortunately, with the Tom integrated, since it released before the Andrew and Toby, he did not get to have the neck seam to where you're able to have a Tom Holland sculpt with the neck. That said, the newest one that's coming, which is the red and blue suit, will have that, but this is kind of a problem because the majority of the film is Tom in his integrated suit, and the fact that you're limited and not having that neck seam to display all three spotties together with it is kind of a bummer. It's a little bit of a letdown. As you can see right here, Andrew with the neck being shown, Toby with the neck being shown, but you just can't do it with the integrated suit. But you can get neck covers from third-party companies, which I did right here with my other Tom, so there are alternatives to this little fail.
Now moving to failure number nine, this is kind of a funny one. Flashback to July 2021, when we didn't even get our first trailer for the No Way Home film, Hot Toys decided to announce the black and gold suit. And this is based off the concept art they received from Marvel and Sony before the film actually launched. And as you can see, it is just not accurate at all. Here is actual photos from the film. The suit completely changed from the concept to final. The electrical effects, the phone on the chest, it's really unfortunate because we're always clamoring Hot Toys to release and announce these things before the film actually comes out. And the first time they actually ended up doing it, it sort of bit them in the ass. This is still a cool figure, but it just makes it completely inaccurate and kind of useless. Oh man, ladies and gentlemen, it is getting real. It is getting serious. With failure number 10 being labeled liars, and I'm calling Hot Toys out for being liars because they said they were going to update this. JC Hong stated that this will be changed in tweet due to all the insanely bad feedback received from the prototype. And as you can see, the final product was maybe like a tad bit tweaked, but in general, it didn't really change. And a lot of collectors were upset about this and are still calling out Hot Toys to this day that this head sculpt is just not up to par. And for such an iconic character of Doc Ock and maybe being possibly the last Doc Ock six scale figure we'll ever get, it's kind of a bummer. And even the hair kind of degraded on this from proto to final, which also kind of sucks. If I'm being completely honest, I don't really hate the sculpt. I think it's like a seven to a 7.5 with the glasses, but let me know your thoughts because other people absolutely hate it. Okay, let's talk about the chest articulation with this specific figure, Norman Osborn's Green Goblin. And you know this, he is a character where you need some form of articulation on that chest to make sure he is hunched over on that beautiful glider that Hot Toys allowed us to have in a six scale form. But unfortunately, you're very restricted there and there's a lot of padding. I understand this is needed to make it look as realistic as possible. But I feel like there could have been some form or some sort of way to have more chest articulation, to have more of that hunched over look, which Green Goblin is pretty iconically known for. Now, there are ways to push the limits to make him articulate that way, but it's going to damage the suit over time and it's just frankly not worth it long term. But overall, I feel like this sort of stopped the figure from being a perfect 10. Yet another reason why this isn't a perfect 10. Man, I hate this so much. Honestly, now that I have my Machu case and I have it set up to where he's going to be in the display with the glider, this pole is only level at this height. There is no second or third pole with different heights that you can have the glider in. And I frankly feel like they've dropped the ball massively here. Why not provide three different heights so you can display him super tall, medium height, and super low height? The fact that you're kind of limited and stuck at this height forever is just kind of annoying to me. Like, I feel like they could have easily solved this. It's just an easy solution. And I do want to say this was in the prototype, so I guess I can't complain too much. But I just feel like now I'm stuck at having a figure behind him kind of be more blocked when I do want him lower in display. That said, I am getting a solution to this very soon. We're getting close to that number 15, number 13 being wasted potential. And I'm showing this lizard here because I think you know where I'm getting at. This lizard should have been a full fledged figure. The fact that he's only halfway through a base is kind of unfortunate. I really feel like that was a huge wasted opportunity to have this as a full fledged release and figure. Why not? Like I understand maybe it wouldn't be number top five seller of hot toys ever but come on if they can make a morbius and a thena i think they would have survived making a lizard release but again the base is still amazing i'm not knocking it or anything but i just feel like it should have been a full-fledged figure because you can have him fighting andrew obviously it's an iconic scene in the movie and you can offer him amazing accessories as well with the cure his lab coat and it also wouldn't have been hard to make as you can see before We've had Venom bodies in the past, so it's something they could have done, but I just feel like they were like, nah, 
we're just going to make it a half base and call it a day. Now, I do understand them going with Sandman as a full base, but I just feel like with Lizard, it should have been a figure, man. It should have. Fourteen fails in, and hopefully I haven't pissed off the entire Spider-Man community because I am trying my best to be civil here, but you know this, how passionate I am towards No Way Home and the figure line, you can see even the most minute details are something I will definitely call Hot Toys out on. But with failure 14, you can see here I brought it up the purr system. The Hot Toys Green Goblin had the movable eyes, which was really perfect honestly this was a necessity because you're able to have so many different and fun unique poses with him the problem is that this green goblin figure is the only figure so far in the line that has the movable purrs and it does suck because figures like doc ock electro any spider trio are limited in having that kind of dead straight look and now that we're getting six scale figures with movable eyes on almost everything, it kind of makes you feel like, damn, these figures are kind of past their time, the prime stages of Hot Toys, because now they're just stuck like this. You cannot move the eyes, and to get another opportunity of the Spider Trio is going to be very hard, unless they make a cameo in a couple of years, which will obviously happen, but that's not going to happen until years and years, so... It is kind of a letdown, especially with the Spider Trio, because the opportunity to get these figures announced as a new version is going to be very rare. But again, the red and blue suit, which was seen at the end of No Way Home, is getting movable eyes. So Tom Holland and Willem Dafoe will be getting their movable eyes, but nothing else in the figure line. So that's kind of a bummer and a fail in my opinion. Here we have it, folks. Everything you've been waiting for, failure number 15 being labeled laziness. And I'm saying laziness because that is the prime reason I believe Hot Toys failed on this entire figure line. Think about all the mistakes I've labeled throughout the video. It's kind of clearly stemmed from laziness and cutting corners. I do want to preface that I am not a Hot Toys creator and developer of these figures, so I guess I can't give my factual evidence on why this figure line didn't turn out as perfect as it would be, but I am going to give my thoughts and theories. But as you can see from the footage I'm sharing, shout out to Justin's collection, the Toby figure is the incorrect height. He is supposed to be taller than Tom, but he is shorter, which is kind of weird. It works with Andrew because he's obviously the tallest of the bunch, but again, it just shows time and time again that Hot Toys really should look at these type of things. I understand we are a fickle group of 1-6 scale collectors, but we're also paying upwards of $500 for these 6 scale figures. So I feel like the comments and criticisms are absolutely justified. As long as we're being respectful, of course. Now, I do understand the argument of these are 6 scale figures, so we can't have the exactly same accuracies. I get it, but I feel like certain things are kind of like, nah, man, they can easily fix this and make this better, but they just choose not to. And at the end of the day, I am still one of the ones buying all of these hot toys, so I guess I'm kind of a sucker for giving all of my complaints over these figures, even though I'm still sinking thousands of dollars on the collection. <laughs> but again, the whole point of this video was to show that hot toys really do cut corners sometimes, and I feel like they can do better with figure lines, and especially for a figure line coming from Spider-Man No Way Home. This is easily one of the biggest, if not the biggest movie of the decade, and I hope people don't find me trying to be negative here. I'm more so giving Hot Toys big constructive criticism and showing my passion along the way. But I still love and adore these figures on the shelf. As you can see, seeing this all come to fruition into a final line is both satisfying and rewarding. But I truly hope you found this information useful. And be sure to let me know in the comments, what is the number one fail in your opinion? Out of all of these 15 failures and complaints that I had, what was the one that really stuck out to you personally? I'd love to hear that because that was the whole point of the video. I really do want to hear your thoughts and your constructive feedback as well. While also hitting that like and subscribe button because y'all know 20 minutes of 15 failures made on this figure line. I may have a target on my back by JC Hong after this, so make sure to do that. But let's end this video with this. Hot Toys, you dropped the ball massively and I'll honestly never forgive you for causing this much controversy for the goat. My goat, Toby Maguire. Okay, love you, bye.